Hello everyone, uh, today I'll talk about computation intelligence. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I'll first define computation intelligence and then discuss its paradigm. I'll conclude my presentation with a discussion about the applications of uh, computational intelligence. Computational intelligence is defined as the study of adaptive mechanisms to enable or facilitate intelligent behavior in complex and changing environments. Computational intelligence tries to imitate human behavior and then try to find a solution to a complex problem which couldn't be solved with classic mathematical modeling. Computational intelligence is used to recognize, classify, cluster, or approximate efficiently in order to make decisions without human assistance or help people in decision processes. There are different paradigms of computational intelligence, which include artificial neural networks, evolutionary computation, swarm intelligence, artificial immune system, fuzzy systems. I will discuss these concepts one by one. However, my main focus will be on artificial neural networks due to their recent popularity in deep learning and its relevant applications. So what are artificial neural networks? ANNs are a type of computational intelligence network that attempt to mimic the way a human brain works. Rather than using a digital model in which all computations manipulate 0 and 1, a neural network works by creating connections between processing elements, the computer equivalent of neurons. The organization and weights of the connection determine the output. The displayed slide shows an example of artificial neural network architecture which consists of three hidden layers sandwiched between an input and an output layer. In simplest terms, the network can be treated as a black box which operates on a set of inputs and generates some outputs. I shall highlight some of the interesting aspects of this architecture in more details in the next slide. Neural networks comprise a hierarchy of processing levels. Each level is called the network layer and consists of a number of processing nodes also called neurons. Typically, the input is fed through an input layer and the final layer is the output layer which makes predictions. The intermediate layers perform the processing and are referred to as the hidden layers. Due to this layered architecture, this neural network is called a multi-layered perceptron or MLP. The individual processing units in each layer are called the nodes in the neural network architecture. The nodes basically implement an activation function, which given an input, decides whether the node will fire or not. The nodes in a neural network are interconnected and can communicate with each other. Each connection has a weight, which specifies the strength of the connection between two nodes. Given an input image, the network starts with a bunch of neurons corresponding to each of the 28 times 28 pixels of the input image, which is 784 neurons in total. Each one of these neurons holds a number that represents the grayscale value of the corresponding pixel, ranging from 0 for black pixels up to 1 for white pixels. This number inside the neuron is called its activation. And the image you might have in mind here is that each neuron is lit up when its activation is a high number. So all these 784 neurons make up the first layer of our neural network, as you can see here in the slide. Now jumping over to the last layer, this has 10 neurons, each representing one of the digits. The activation induced neurons, again some number that's between 0 and 1, represents how much the system thinks that a given image corresponds with a given digit. There's also a couple of layers in between, called the hidden layers. This is how a trained artificial neural network performs classification. It is very important to mention here that uh, the network parameters or weights are adjusted during the training process and the training itself is performed either in supervised or unsupervised way. In supervised training, the network is provided with uh, data and labels, while in unsupervised training, uh, an unlabeled data is provided to the network. Now, let's move on to the next concept of computational intelligence, which is known as evolutionary computation or evolutionary algorithms. 
Evolutionary computation has as its objective to mimic processes from natural evolution, where the main concept is survival of the fittest. The weakest must die. In natural evolution, survival is achieved through reproduction. Offspring reproduced from two parents contain genetic material of both parents, hopefully the best characteristic of each parent. Those individuals that inherit bad characteristic are weak and lose the battle to survive. Evolutionary computation finds its applications in data mining, classification and clustering, and fault diagnosis. Now, let's briefly, briefly discuss the details of evolutionary algorithms. Evolutionary algorithms use a population of individuals, where an individual is referred to as a chromosome. For each generation, individuals compete to reproduce offspring. Those individuals with the best survival capabilities best chance to reproduce. Offspring are generated by combining parts of the parents, a process referred to as crossover. Each individual in the population can also undergo a mutation which alters the chromosome. The survival strength of an individual is measured using a fitness function which reflects the objective and constraints of the problem to be solved. Now there are different strategies under evolutionary algorithm which can be categorized as genetic algorithm, genetic programming, evolutionary programming, and evolutionary strategies. In my recent work, I use evolutionary algorithm for feature learning to perform 3D object recognition. Let's discuss the next concept which is swarm intelligence. Swarm intelligence originated from the study of colonies or swarms of social organisms. Studies of the social behavior of organisms in swarms prompted the design of very efficient optimization and clustering algorithms. For example, simulation studies of the graceful but unpredictable choreography of bird flocks led to the design of particle swarm optimization algorithm. Application of swarm intelligence include shortest path optimization and clustering. Artificial immune system. The natural immune system or NIS has an amazing pattern matching ability which is used to distinguish between foreign cells entering the body referred to as antigen and the cells belonging to the body. And, and as the NIS encounters antigen, the adaptive nature of the NIS is exhibited with NIS memorizing the structure of these antigen for faster future response to the antigen. An artificial immune system or AIS model some of the aspects of an NIS and is mainly applied to solve pattern recognition problems, to perform classification tasks and to cluster data. One of the main application areas of AIS is in anomaly detection such as fraud detection and computer virus detection. Moving to the last concept which is fuzzy systems. A logic based on the two truth values that is true and false is sometimes inadequate when describing human reasoning. For the system uses the whole interval between 0 and 1 to describe human reasoning. As a result, fuzzy system is being applied in rule-based automatic controllers. The fuzzy systems work on levels of possibilities of input to achieve the definite output. Fuzzy systems find their applications in control systems, gear transmission and braking systems, and controlling lifts. Here are some of the applications of computational intelligence. Computational intelligence has been used for real-time water treatment process, classification and prediction of cancer, classification of social network users, hydrothermal power systems operation planning, sentiment classification, improving the performance of IoT application, and recently for feature learning. These are some of the references that I have used to prepare these slides. Thank you very much for watching this video.